Yo, what's up, yo? Maybe been listening to some of the current YouTube luminaries, Tesla, Einstein, Lisa Randall, Deepak Chopra, Stephen Hawking, Alex Filipenko, Michio Kaku, the Quantum Gravity Group, and Bill the Cat, uh, pondering dark energy, Planck scale mysteries, and whether existence exists. The etymology of existence is ex, out, as in exit, exterior, etc., and est, be. Existence is an expression, etymology, push out, of being. From our vantage point, existence, we see that being got expressive. Some say the universe, aka existence, has up to 11 dimensions. I'm okay with the standard 3 plus 1, but doesn't matter. For purposes of this essay, existence is non-zero dimensions. The source being of which is a zero-dimensional unity or unified field, a collapsed pure potentiality which underlies our world of specificity and differentiation. Deepak Chopra summarized that this field conceives, creates, becomes, illumines, observes, and sustains the universe. Space and time are its creations, or more precisely, its conceptions. In a very succinct five words, a Maharishi Mahesh Yogi said, the world is a concept. Space and time, dimensions, are prerequisites to diversity, first inventions for differentiation to exist. Space and time separate things. Without them, everything is collapsed to zero. No existence, no concept. The etymology of concept is co, together as in connect, collect, combine, coordinate, and cap, grasp, as in capture, encapsulate, recapitulate. Some of the aforementioned luminaries say that the source, creator, conceiver of existence is consciousness. The etymology of consciousness is co and sk, split as in schism, scissors, it's an ultimate integration of opposites, unity and diversity. Yo, universe, that works well. Consciousness makes concepts. To differentiate one thing from another requires an agency that attends, conceptually embraces both. Nikola Tesla was asked what the base constituent of space-time existence is, and when he said tenuity, my mind leaped into paroxysms of etymological phantasmagoria, Immediately I saw ten, as in attend, tendon, tenacity, sustain, contain, tent, tantra, as another etymological line for connectivity, i.e. consciousness. Ten, uh, stretch, weave, Latin, tenera, mold, keep, hold, keep, maintain, sustain. Other luminaries commenting on this primary constituent question include Bill the Cat, who said, <laughs> Mad Magazine, uh, which posited sturdy laminated chicken fat, and string theorists who gave us strings. May the gods of our choice help us all. I'll attack both strings and gods in a minute or two. But first, <clears throat> Genesis. Uh, some accepted equations indicate the smallest units of existence, the basis of space and time, are Planck scale strings. What is the diameter of a Planck length string? The only quantity less than its length is zero. A zero diameter string is really a one dimensional line, not a string. It's a concept, not a creation. A line, a length, is the simplest expression of non zero dimensionality, of existence. Pure consciousness collapsed in zero dimensions, infinitely symmetrical, undertakes, in quantum physics terminology, spontaneous symmetry breaking. This expresses the universe. Consciousness uncollapses, conceiving and entering non-zero dimensions, yet remains outside of dimensionality also, hence asymmetry, conceiver and conception. Compare uh, the first verse of the book of John in the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <clears throat> in Vedic texts, um, a genesis equivalency is the Sanskrit term akasha, out of collapse, or negation of collapse. Compare Maharishi Mahesh Yogi again. Akasha is conceptual space-time geometry. Strings are said to be creating, quote-unquote, the universe by vibrating, which means move, which means climb out of their static one dimension, which means are at least three plus one dimensions are conceived because vibration entails a frequency, e.g. cycles per second, so time is implicit, necessitated, and conceived also. <clears throat> At what scale does line and conceptual space-time become real space-time? Answer, it doesn't. The individual person recognizes, etymology of recognize, putting knowledge back together, or we say realizes, the concept. 
At our own convenient one meter scale, we see solid objects, momentum, collisions, color, etc. Even at the atomic scale, 10 to the 10th, we see that a collision of solid objects is really electron shells of the participating atoms with mutually negative electromagnetic energies repelling and solid matter to be a non-empirical apprehension, i.e. illusion or more politely a rhetorical convenience of its scale. With billions of dollars, we built the LHC to display a yet more fundamental view of our world. Even so, empirical observation bottoms out at 10 to the minus 16 centimeters, leaving us 17 orders of magnitude short of the Planck scale and at the mercy of string theorists and uh, pre priests. <clears throat> Before seeing light as a particle and space as empty, the view was that something called ether hosted light's propagation through space. Then, like Pluto, ether was dismissed. Now science has come to see that empty space is not empty, but intrinsically energetic. In recent events, physics cites quantum fluctuations at the Planck scale and posits zero-point energy. Meanwhile, astronomers discover that intergalactic distances are increasing because new space is being created by, quote-unquote, dark energy. To proclaim the obvious, vibrating lines, a.k.a. strings, are the dark energy a.k.a. quantum flux, a.k.a. zero-point energy, a.k.a. ether. Dark energy extends or stretches itself into its own conception. Non-zero dimensionality, a.k.a. vibrating lines, etc., etc., ether, is not only in space, it is primary to space. It is the presence of consciousness in three plus one or whatever dimensions. Dark energy is an aspect of consciousness an agency by which consciousness expresses and extends itself into non-zero dimensionality, where we can now call it cosmic consciousness. The universe is ever and always a concept, and the conceiver is everywhere in the concept, or rather, the concept is actually within the conceiver. <coughs> consciousness, connectivity, tenuity, inheres in existence because existence inhabits consciousness. Examples of connectivity, gravity, magnetism, cause and effect, but also Attend, apprehend, recognize, understand, remember, compare, determine, define, measure, long, uh, love, and live. These things we do are examples of tenuity. The most important one is love. <clears throat> um, people, yeah, um, people recognize because consciousness is omnipresent. We focus and localize both the concept and conceiver. Uh, I'd like to refer you to a song called Nature Boy, the best edition of it that I've found gives it the best instrumentality by, is by Jason Gould. It does a pretty good job on um, telling you the importance of love. Uh, <clears throat> Consciousness is implicit in the very fabric of the space-time geometry in which we exist. We could say the human nervous system is a mechanism where that consciousness warms up or becomes focused. Consciousness because consci becomes conscious, intelligence becomes intelligent. The human brain inherits from the field comprehension, the ability to have concepts. The etymologies of both these words are the same, to grasp together. This is how we perceive, conceive, strategize, coordinate, act with intelligence, drive motor scooters, throw boomerangs, use pronouns and direction signals correctly, and pronounce Dnipropetrovsk, the city in the Ukraine. <clears throat> Formless, zero-dimension consciousness has a thought, the world, the universe. Consciousness attends, coheres with, observes, takes on form. By attention, two things are made, conceiver and concept, or if you prefer, uh, observer and observed, or subject-object. A very trenchant quote here from Maharishi Mahesh Yogi again. The link between subject and object is attention. When attention goes toward objects, consciousness takes on the form of the object. Attention identifies an object by transplanting it onto the consciousness of the subject. Time is quantified. Planck scale unit is 10 to the minus 43rd seconds. The universe is conceived, observed, and deleted 10 to the 43rd times per second. Consciousness frees itself from form. Consciousness reverts to itself, to purity, to zero D to infinite symmetry, to full potential. Each expression of the universe exists for 10 to the minus 43rd seconds and is discontinued and superseded by another. 
There's a cycle of thinker, thought, thinker, thought, thinker. Each second is 10 to the 43rd intermittent universes. But we earthlings see continuity instead of intermittency. Here is creation, born of misconception. Creation is misconception. Veda has a phrase for this. The, the Rig Veda has a mistake of the intellect. Our individual localized focused consciousness floating on the illusion of continuity, a.k.a. creation, lingers in a conception which was timed out. The return to the conceiver, the self, is skipped. Self is lost. This disconnected condition is variously termed using 10% of our mental potential, ignorance, sin, death, impaired motorist, two pickles short of a happy meal. The cycle of thinker, thought, thinker, thought, thinker is broken, and perception goes off on its own separated and illusory branch of thought, 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 until it crashes. Without coming back to the self, to the source of all conception, it crumbles, perception crumbles. We can't see without the seer. Compare from the Bible, eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and you will suffer. Or compare, the wages of sin is death. Or three, the tower of Babel. Or four, yo, go out and play in traffic, yo. Comments, please. Uh, watch for a continuation on this channel. I wanted to limit the first one to 15 minutes, but I maybe have two hours worth of the stuff. Uh, and I want to hear from people, please. Thank you.